Alongside Brian Hayes and Cheryl Pounder, that ugly loss for the Leafs brought out the best from a very sour Brian Hayes on social media. Brian, you wrote, throwing away games to bad teams has always been the Leaf thing. New coach, new players, doesn't matter. Play great against Tampa and then get pumped by Columbus. Leafy 101. Hayes, you've had some time to think about it. You want to walk that back a bit or are you going to double down on this? Oh, I'm doubling down, tripling down. I'm, I'm storming forward, you know. I'm not changing my mind when it comes to the way that team played last night. The Leafs were awful. They were terrible in Columbus. And there's a part of me that also has to be consistent here because I pumped their tires for three hours on overdrive after that Tampa game. And they played outstanding against Tampa. And this was a test for them because that has been the theme throughout camp, throughout the summer. Okay, the core five are back. All the mainstays are back. But we've got a new coach here. You got some new forwards. You got new insertions into the top four. You got a couple of new goaltenders that are going to step up for this team. And on a back-to-back, -back, short travel, they've had a soft schedule to a lot of home games, a lot of games spread out, mm -hmm. short travel, back-to-back -back against an inferior team. It's, it's one thing if you lose. Everyone's going to lose. Every team in the league, the league is going to lose. It's how you lose. That game was over five minutes in last night. You could tell. You've, you, I've seen it before. And it happens every single year early in the season with the Leafs. They threw away multiple games early in the year last year against Chicago, against Columbus, against Buffalo, against Ottawa. All inferior teams, all teams that missed the playoffs. And this team undoubtedly will make the playoffs. But what do they want to be? That's what I've been asking, and that's what I want to get an answer on, and I'm not sure what that answer is after last night. Do you want to just get there with 100 points, 100, 203 points, and play Boston or Florida and Tampa in the first round, probably on the road? Or do you want to do what Florida did last year during the regular season, what Boston did the year before that, what Tampa did in their cup runs, and be serious from pillar to post and finish with 110 points, 115 points, win your division, maybe win your conference, and make your life easier come the spring every point matters they never gave themselves a chance at points last night Columbus was faster they were more physical they outchanced them and they pumped them and I'm not walking that back well don't walk it back because we were on the panel last night and we pumped them as well and all of a sudden between period days we were yawning. Uh, we were looking at one another going, what is going on right now? And the new mantra from Craig Berube, you know, grit, grind, greatness. That's all of the things that we did see in that first game against Tampa Bay, right? We saw the physicality. We saw the defense. We saw the driving north. And all of a sudden, we go from the A game to the D game. And if you want to win the Atlantic, you got to find a B or a C somewhere to have some consistency. So what it brings to me is it brings the red flags. And yeah, I don't think the sky is falling with one game, but you do look at the body of work in the past, the repeated behaviors, uh, the definition of a habit. And you got to find ways to conjure those up. Because when you look at this group in particular, I mean, Austin Matthews said the neutral zone was the Autobahn. Well, guess what it was? You gave up 13 <laughs> odd man rushes. That takes work to do. It means that you're not tracking back with purpose. It means you're not communicating and there's an urgency. You may not have your legs. That's fine, right? There's an 82 game schedule. But you got to find that grit, that grind if you want to be great. Cheryl, you mentioned you were part of the broadcast. You're not in the clear either. Your cheat code segment before <laughs> the Leafs got throttled by the Jackets was all about how good Tanev and Ekman Larson have been so far. Do you want to take that one back or not? Much like Hot Hayes, I ain't walking it back. No chance. Been way too long on that segment and breaking down video. Are you kidding me? Um, listen, you know what Tanev is, right? He's a guy that protects the middle of the ice and the shot blocks. And you think that would resonate through the entire group. And I would hope that there would be a culture, a bit of a mind shift with having that kind of warrior on the back end. Yeah, he was not great yesterday. And you look at OEL giving the puck away. I mean, all I talked about in the cheat code was how he has such an active stick using that frame to push to the outside the power play quarterback I do think these guys were fantastic acquisitions in the summer I think that Brad Trilliving certainly addressed a need on that blue line but everyone collectively had to be better I mean I kept waiting for a punch after the first a punch after the second and they really didn't have anything but in terms of those two guys and their body of work through the seven games I'm still sticking with my cheat code
Yeah, those two guys have been great. And listen, last night, you just broke it down. Nobody showed up. But that's where maybe you need your goalie to steal one. And Dennis Hill to be looked like he wasn't quite ready for prime time. He, did, he gave up a couple of soft goals last night. Maybe if Joseph Wall's playing, maybe they find a way to keep that close. They find their legs in the third period. That was the first time pretty yeah. much all season for the Leafs. The goaltender, he didn't pull his weight either last night. The Leafs could be getting Joseph Wall back real soon, and they're going to need him to hit the ground running. Their next seven games are against teams currently in or tied for a playoff spot.